Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at the idea that you don't need to oversize the connectors found on your brushless motor. This is, of course, relative to the connectors that are found on your battery pack that lead to the electronic speed control. So now the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna throw a motor onto the dyno. We're gonna power it up with a 12 volt power supply that I actually use for charging batteries. And then we're going to measure the current that is found between the battery and the electronic speed control as well as the speed control and the brushless motor. Now the way that we're going to measure the current from the brushless motor to the electronic speed control is using this amp clamp that I ended up picking out. This is one of my most favorite tools right now but probably because it's new and because of what it does. Now I'll tell you the real reason why I got this in just a moment, but this is going to let us a measure the DC current that goes from the battery pack to the electronic speed control, and then we can measure the AC current that is going from the speed control to our brushless motor. We'll be able to see how accurate the DC side is, and just for sake of argument, I did run around the house and measure a bunch of AC circuits when I am able to split the neutral and the hot wire apart and measure that and they came out very accurate in terms of the values that I'm getting versus using a 10 amp multimeter. Now the real reason I ended up picking this meter up is because I do plan to test a bunch of different battery packs and I plan to do this in a lot more of a scientific method that's going to allow us to capture the data and really see how a battery performs. Now this is something that you won't want to miss out on so what I would recommend if you're not already subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of that. I've already tested the very first battery and I'm hoping that I can get that video out to you guys very shortly and then we're going to lead into more batteries. I have about three that have been picked up so we're going to be testing those and seeing how well they perform. Now another thing to announce since I'm already on this sort of announcing type topic right now is that I do have a lot of videos that I collect of me running my radio control vehicles and I don't really have a spot where to place them. I can't really throw them up on the channel because it really doesn't match the theme of what we're trying to do here on RC Explain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a link in the description below where you can find my other channel where I'm going to upload videos that are specifically of me running my radio controlled vehicles. And if you're anything like me and you like speed, you will want to subscribe to that channel because everything on that channel is probably going to go fast. Also, thank you to the patrons who continue to support the channel and allow me to dig deeper into the hobby to really understand what we're dealing with. Now, back to the topic. To kick things off here, I want to explain what the expectation is in very simple terms. So if we have our battery pack, this has two leads that go to our electronic speed control. From there, we have three leads that go to our brushless motor. Now, if you take a look at this diagram, that's not really a diagram. We have three phases that we know that's in our brushless motor. Phase one, you could say, goes from the motor wire A to the motor wire B. In phase two, you have A going to C, and then in phase three, you have B going to C. Now you can see there that for every three phases we have, a motor wire is only going to be used two thirds of the time because it only is found in two of those phases and it's not directly connected with the other phase, the third phase. So the expectation here is that at 100% throttle, we need to understand 100% throttle because if we get into any type of partial throttle, Model. This throws things out the window and makes things a lot more complicated. And you'll see that as we go through the actual test where we're throwing the motor on the dyno. So at 100% throttle, what we expect is that the current's going to be somewhere approximately around that two thirds mark. So let's run the dyno. We're gonna fire up our dyno. We're gonna use the 1800 mark as the first interval. We wanna see what kind of DC current we're measuring and compare that to the dyno. So the dyno is saying somewhere around 16 and a half to 17. And our amp clamp is also measuring the exact same amount pretty well there as well. So that determines that it's quite accurate for our use. Let's switch it over and start to measure the AC current. So we're gonna go back up to that 1800 mark. Now do note, we spoke about this before, that we're not interested in the comparison here. We're only seeing 15 and a half amps on the amp clamp and we were seeing about 16, 17 there on the the dyno. So now as we push this up to 100%, this will more so show us what is happening with the system as a comparison. So here at 
the 100% mark. We're now measuring about 34 and a half amps on our dyno and we're seeing about 23 and a half amps or so on the amp clamp. There you have it. We are roughly seeing about two thirds of the current of the battery pack to electronic speed control. Now I have to throw a monkey wrench in this because I did measure the exact same way in different power systems and I was seeing a significant fluctuation in actual amounts of current that's going from the electronic speed control to the motor versus the electronic speed control to the battery pack. However, the major point here is that the current in the brushless motor leads is going to be lower at 100% throttle constant speed than the actual current that goes from your battery pack to the electronic speed control. And from what we learned there, we know that the connectors that go in are placed on the motor side do not need to be as large as the connectors that you're placing on your battery pack. Where else can we look? Well, take a look at this electronic speed control here. On the battery leads, we can see that the cable is running an eight gauge lead right here from the positive side here of the battery pack to electronic speed control. Now flipping over to the other side, we see that the speed control is actually using a 10 gauge wire that goes from our electronic speed control to our brushless motor. So even the electronic speed control companies are compensating for this difference by placing different gauge wires on the battery pack to electronic speed control side versus the electronic speed control to brushless brushless motor side. Hope you found this video interesting, understanding the magnitude of current that flows through the different components within our radio controlled power system. That's it for this one. Hope to see you in the next videos that we do on is this LiPo battery good or does it suck? We're gonna be introducing a bunch of parameters that really test the performance and allow us to understand the type of performance that we're getting. Take care guys.